1.3 representing functions as rules and tables. All right, we got Mr. Brust here as the ultimate warrior in wrestling. Look at that. He is pumped and ready to learn all about functions, rules, and tables. So let's get right into it. A couple of things you want to pause your video right now and write down these definitions. So the first one is called domain. Domain is the set containing all the inputs, all the X values, all independent variables. These are synonyms. Inputs, X values, independent variables and domain. We talk about them freely as the same thing. The range is conversely to that. It's the set containing all outputs, all Y values, all dependent variables. When we have a rule, I put a number in, maybe I multiply it by three, then maybe I add four to it, all right? And then something comes out. What I put in is my domain, my input, my X value, my independent variable. What comes out is in the range. It's my output, my Y value, my dependent variable. If we look down here, we have domain. We have a table of data. The domain is all possible inputs. So I'm going to use curly brackets, the official name for this, curly brackets, and I'm going to list all possible X values. So I'm going to list 10, 12, 13, and 17. Do they need to be in the curly brackets? Yes, they do. All right. Can you use other brackets? No, you may not. You need to use the curly brackets. Look, my curly brackets aren't even that good. It's okay. All right, so I have four possible inputs. My range, make my curly bracket, all possible Y values, 19.99, 23.99, 25.99, and 33.98. Whoops, excuse me, 33.98. There are all my possible outputs, all my possible Y values, all my dependent variables, they depend on my input. They change depending on what number I put in. All right, that's why it's called the dependent variable. All right, the next big word we have here is function. A function is a pairing such that each input is paired with exactly one output. For, In other words, for every input, there's only one output. So I want to take a look at it over here. We have some people, some very famous people, and we have some places, some very nice places, and Ramstein. All right, so these are our inputs. Just kidding, Ramstein kids. It's okay. All right, so if we take a look at this, we know that Bruss teaches at Ramstein. Do -do 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 We know that Kelly teaches at Bob Motor. Do -do 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 and we know that Sullivan teaches at K-Town. Okay? It's possible for this to happen because Brust is only at one place, Ramstein. At the exact same time, Kelly is at only one place, Bob Motor, and Sullivan is at only one place, K-Town. For every input, they only go to one output. Now let's take a look at a different situation. Let's take a look at this as if it were... The following. Mr. Brust used to work at K-Town. Maybe he's torn up about it, and he wants to work at K-Town and at the same time still work at Ramstein. He loves both places. Mr. Kelly, of course, wants to stay at Baumwater because it's such a great place, and Sullivan wants to stay at K-Town until they kick him out. So now, is this a possibility? Can Sullivan work just at K-Town? Yeah, he can go there and work just at K-Town. That is very possible. Can Kelly work just at Baumholder? For sure, not a problem. Can Brust simultaneously be at both K-Town and Ramstein? No, that would not be able to function. That would be not be a function. It would not be possible. Okay, now let's take a look in terms of numbers. All right, so over here in terms of numbers, Let's determine, we have our inputs, we have our outputs. Let's determine if certain situations are functions. So the first situation we have here, is this a function? Is our mapping diagram a function? Well, four goes to five. That one input has one output, that's good. Eight 
goes to only one place, that's good. 11 goes to only one place, 9. So in terms of function, that would have definitely be fun for function. All right, let's try another one. Let's try this one. Could we have this function? 4 goes to 9, 8 goes to 5, 11 goes to 0, 11 goes to 9. No, this would be no fun or no function, right? Because 11 cannot go to two different places. One input cannot go to two outputs, and that would be the reason. Let's take a look at another one. Is this possible? Can 4 go to 0, 5, and 9? Well, no, that's not possible, again, because one input cannot go to three different outputs. That one was easy. All right, but now the hardest one. Can 4 go to 0? Can 8 go to 0? Can 11 go to 0? Well, it would appear that we would say no, right? But if you take a look at it, this input goes to only one output. This input goes to only one output, and this input goes to only one output. So yes, this would be a function. And if we wanted to do the domain of this, I would have my curly bracket. It'd be 4, 8, 11. And my range of this would be just 0. The 5 and the 9 aren't used, so we wouldn't include those in our um, range. It would kind of be like, can Kelly, Brust, and Sullivan all work at one school? It would be amazing. I know, all three of those guys at one school. And yes, it could be possible. All right? All right, so we want to tell whether each pairing is a function and identify the domain and range, which shouldn't be too bad. We just did that. So let's do our domain first. Our domain is set of all inputs. So we have four, five, and nine. We are using all of those. And our range, each has uh, something going to those numbers, so that'd be 0, 1, 2, or 3. So, is it a function? 4, this input goes to one place. 5, this input goes to two places, which it cannot happen. So this is no function. All right, no function. One input cannot go to more than one place. Let's go down here, find our domain and our range. So our domain all inputs, 4, 5, 6, 9. Let's go to our range, 10. I only need to write it once. So now, is it a function? Well, again, the question is, does each input go to only one output? 4 goes to 10. 5 only goes to 10. 6 only goes to 10. 9 only goes to 10, so indeed this is a function. For every input, there's only one output. Let's try this one. Our domain for this one is, looks like it is just 10. And our range, 4, 5, 6, 9. Oh, it looks like we just flipped this one, didn't it? So, is this a function? Well, 10 goes to 4 here, but this is the same number, and it goes to 5, and this, so no, 10 goes to four different places, so this is not a function, all right? This is not a function because for the one input we have, it goes to four different outputs. All right, so we want to make a table for the function. We're going to identify the range of the function, okay? So this is our function. It's also known as a rule. It tells us what we're going to do. We're going to have an input and an output, all right? So let's try this here. So first of all, we need a table. So let's make a table here, x and y. Our domain, our possible x's are 2, 6, 10, whoa, 10, and 12. So we need to find our possible y's. So the first one I'm going to input is 2. So y equals 1 half of 2 plus 7. 1 half of 2 is 1 plus 7 is 8. So y equals 8. So 2, the input 2, goes to the output 8. y equals, let's put in 6, half of 6 plus 7. I multiply first, so half of 6 is 3. 3 plus 7 is 10. So when my input is 6, my output is 10. 
All right, let's come down here and do the next one. Y equals one half, and then I have uh, 10. So one half of 10 plus seven. So half of 10 is five. Five plus seven is 12. So for input of 10, my output is 12, all right? And last but certainly not least, we have 12. So input 12, y equals half of 12 plus 7. Half of 12 is 6. 6 plus 7 is 13. So when I have an input of 12, my output is 13. So my uh, identify the range. So my range is going to be 8, 10. 12 and 13 when my domain is 2, 6, 10, and 12. Okay, so this we had a rule and we had a domain, we came up with a range. Now we have a domain, we have a range, and we want to come up with a rule. So we want to start with y equals something. All right, y equals, so y equals, how do I go from my x? to my y. How do I go from 4 to 8, from 7 to 11, 10 to 14, all the same exact way? Well, there's a couple of different things you could look at. I look, I start and think of my basic operations, right? So I have adding, subtracting, multiply, divide, all stuff like that. So let's start with multiply. I know because 4 times eight, uh, 2 is 8. So 4 times 2. Let's try here. Does 7 times 2 equal 11? Absolutely not. It does not equal that. So I know that multiply by 2 doesn't work. What else? I could add 4. 4 plus 4 is 8, so I'm going to add 4. 7 plus 4 is 11. 10 plus 4 is 14. 13 plus 4 is 17. So I start with my input, and I add 4. And there we have it. x plus 4 is your rule. So pause the video and try these. Before we go over those, I want to show you a couple things on the website. So here's where we're on Algebra 1.3, all right? Um, so representing functions as rules and tables, there's a video. Um, the packet, of course, you could download. I want to show you these practice solutions here. So these are the practice problems all worked out. If you're not going through the practice and then coming in here and checking your answers, you're doing yourself a real disservice. I would do all the practice first, or I would do maybe like the first two, then I'd come over here and check them. Did I get them right? If I didn't get them right, why didn't I get them right? Do I understand how to do them now? If I don't understand, then I'm going to go ask one of my teachers how to do it. All right, And I'm going to do that throughout because the entire purpose of doing the practice is to learn. And a lot of times learning means making mistakes and figuring out what you did wrong. All right. So that's the practice. If you need more practice before the um, mastery check, if you just don't feel comfortable, come over here. You can do the corrective assignment. Remember, the corrective assignment is if you fail the mastery check, you definitely have to do the corrective assignment. But some of you may want to take this corrective assignment, maybe do a handful of them, maybe do the odds or the evens or just a few of each type. The Answers are at the bottom. Again, it'll tell you why you got your answers right or wrong, okay? You can learn from your mistakes doing that as well. And sometimes we find kids that helps quite a bit. And last thing I want to point out is at the bottom here is this application walkthrough. The application walkthrough helps you figure out all those tough questions. All right, I know, for example, that a lot of you are going to get this one wrong on the packet. Number three and number four, you're going to miss it. So you should come over here, listen to what I have to say about this problem before you, you know, get too frustrated, all right? So that's just a little bit more about all this stuff. Hopefully now you can, it'll help you a little bit better when you do these packets. All right, so if you look here, tell whether the pairing is a function. Does one, does this input go to only one output? Yes, it does. 0 goes to only one output, and 6 goes to only one output. Therefore, every input goes to only one output, and that means it's a function. The domain is all possible inputs, or x values. Those are 1, 0, and 6. And the range only has two possible outputs, 3 and 5. 
you come down here, write a rule for the following function. How do I go from 3 to 0? How do I go from 5 to 2, 7 to 4, and 9 to 6? I start with my input x and I subtract 3. 3 minus 3 